Tanga Shela, where gold coins were minted inside Tanjore Fort, was like another small fort. The guard outside Thang Achala was as strong as that at the gates of Tanjore Fort. That evening when Goddess Kundave and Vanatha went to visit the Golden Road, it was the time when the goldsmiths were leaving after work. The gatekeepers inspected the goldsmiths and prepared to send them out. Goldsmiths flocked to Vazaland. At that time the palace chariot arrived and stopped at the gate of Thang Azalai. Kunta and Vanati descended. On seeing them the guards and goldsmiths stood in awe and chanted long live the younger brat. The head of Thang Azalai came running and eagerly welcomed the princesses. Agni Gundam that takes in and distills the gold, molds that make coins, he showed printed coins etc. The gold coins molded that day were lying in a heap on one side. The light of the green gold coins caught the eye. Each coin had a tiger seal on one side and a ship seal on the other. You see, Vanati. Gold has been coming to this Chola country from all over the world for a long time. It came by land and by ship. So far, the responsibility of carrying so much gold has been on the women of the Chola country. They wore it as ornaments and carried it until they couldn't sleep. For a while, the burden on the women of the Chola country decreased. It's coming. Our Danatakari Pulvaterayar has arranged for the minting of such eye-catching gold coins. Kundave said. Sister. What comfort is this? Vanathi asked. What is the convenience? You ignorant woman. If this kind of gold is made into coins, it is convenient to value it without stopping to say so much gold. Citizens are convenient to pay taxes to the government. Traders do not have to bother exchanging commodity for commodity in doing business with foreigners. You can buy things by giving gold coins, you can buy gold coins by receiving gold coins. Goods can be sold. That is why the Chola traders greet our ambassador, Pulvaterea. Let me tell you one more thing. Listen. Saying that, Kundave Devi lowered her voice and said those who are plotting against the emperor and the emperor's family are more comfortable with these coins. What kind of good people can be turned into traitors by these gold coins, isn't it? She said. Kundawala's last words fell lightly on the ears of the Thang Azala chief officer who was standing nearby. The officer said, Yes, mother. We hear all such terrible rumors these days. That is why the security of this golden road has increased for a while now. The number of people coming and going to the underground prison under it has increased. He said that. There are those who come, are there also those who go? Kundave asked. Why? That too. They brought one this morning. They brought him back before a lady. Said the official. Who would that be? Kuntava was a little surprised. They went to the back after seeing the places where the goldsmith work was going on. There was a small door in the back wall. They opened it and left. There was little light in the place. The roof was low. A fur-chilling roar was heard from all sides. A servant stood holding a torch. In the light of it, looking from all four sides, it was seen that there were many cages and tigers locked inside them. Some of them are tigers, some leopards. Some were lying down, some were wandering back and forth inside the cage. Their eyes glowed like fireflies in the dim light of the place. Kuntave held Vanati's arm tightly and said, ATI. Are you scared? Don't faint here and fall. She said. Vanati smiled lightly and said, What is the fear of the tiger, sister? Isn't the tiger the guardian of our clan? She said. Don't the guards sometimes join in with the enemy? Is it more dangerous then? No. Sister. Human guards can betray like that. These tigers won't. Not to mention these tigers have eaten so many traitors. Isn't their blood mixed with these tigers' bodies? Vanati's body, who had said no fear just now, was shaking a little. Sister. What do you mean they will give living humans as prey to these tigers, what? She asked. They won't do that. Didn't I tell you that there is an underground prison under this golden corridor? There is only one way to get in and out of it. 
that way is in this tiger hall. If anyone wants to escape from the prison, they must come inside this hall. Then they will fall prey to the tigers. Siva Shiva! What cruelty! That's what a kingdom is. There's mercy and there's cruelty. Heavens! At some point I'll be locked up in this dungeon. If you'd heard what the little rascal spoke to me today. Good, sister. There are no people in the world who have the power to capture and imprison themselves. If someone tried to do that, wouldn't the earth split and swallow the city of Tanjore? I'm not worried about that. I'm only worried about our old doctor's son. That poor boy wouldn't have tried to escape, would he? Sad child. But who can change when and how? The roar of the tigers grew louder. Looking at the guard, he said, the tigers look very angry. Said Kundave. No, mother. These greet and welcome the emperor's daughter-in-law. Replied the guard evenly. Welcome. Said Kundave. Besides, it's almost time for the tigers to lay their prey. They growl at the thought of their prey. Then we can leave quickly. Where is the prison door? By this time they had reached a corner of the hall. The guards moved a tiger cage there. There was a door embedded in the ground. Two men stooped and opened the door outwards. Some stairs were found inside. They went down one by one through them. Darkness deepened. A smoke-dimmed light was coming from two torches held by two servants. They had to go in single file through narrow crisscrossing paths. If there the fierce roar of the tigers made the fur tremble, here the soft, mournful human voices from all four sides made the soul tremble. The cells in that dungeon were not in a row. The front and back were angular and marbled. The guard went to each room door and held the torch aloft. In some rooms there was only one person inside. Some had two. The occupants of some rooms were chained to a ring of nails hammered into the wall. In some rooms they were left free without such construction. When Kunde Vedavi saw the faces of the people in each room, everyone went up to shake their heads. At one point in the middle, Venati said, What is this terrible thing? Why are these people locked up like this? Is there no judicial investigation? She asked. According to it, ordinary crimes have all the judicial process. But those who conspired against the state, foreign spies and those who aided spies will be put here. If the truth is known from them, they will leave it out. But the truth is not evident from some people. Will they tell me if there is anything? They are hard to sing. She said. Meanwhile, Ponnarmaniani. The song was heard very recently. When he went to the room and picked up the lamp, he found that there was a little boy there. He is the child we already know, Sendan A. Muthan. His innocent milky green baby face caught the attention of the princesses. Looking at him crouching down, he asked, Was it you who was singing? She asked. Yes, mother. He said. Looks like you're excited. What lack of excitement, mother? The omnipresent Lord is with me here too. Speaking like a great sage? Who are you father? What were you doing outside? I am neither a great sage nor a small sage. Mother. While I was outside, I was making pomelas and offering them to the Lord. Here I am satisfied by making pomisalis. You are not only a wise man, but also a wise one. Do you know this one song? Do you know many more? There are more songs to come, but I've been singing this one since I got here. Why? On my way here I came through Thang Azalai. So far I have seen a bunch of Pasumban, which I have never used before. It reminded me of the statue of Bonner Manion. Lucky you. When you see gold, many people have many desires. You are reminded of God's wife. Don't you have any close relatives, father? Only the mother is there. She is outside the Tanjore fort by the Lotus Pond. That mother's name? Vana Measles. I see that mom and tell you you're excited here. It's no use, mother. My mother can neither hear nor speak. Oko. 
Is your name Synthan Amudan? asked the younger brat in surprise. Yes, mother. Do you know this poor man's name? For what crime have you been brought here and imprisoned? Until yesterday, I didn't even know what my crime was. I only found out today. Know what? It turned out that I had been caught and imprisoned for the crime of helping someone. What was it? Which one did you help? One day at the gate of Tanjakata I met a Briyani from outside. He said he wanted a place to stay for the night. I took him to my house. But I never dreamed that he was alone. Do you know his name? He said his name was Vallavarayan Vandiyathavan. He also said he belonged to the old Vanara clan. Kunta and Vanati looked at each other. Both their hearts spoke in unison. Vanati looked at Sendan Amuthan and said, Tell me everything, father. She said. Sendan Amuthan said the same. He said that from the time he met Vandiyathava at the gate of the fort till the people of Palvur caught him on the river bank. Why did you go so far as to trust a passerby? Vanathi asked. Mother. When we see some people, we immediately get caught. It seems that we can even give our lives for them. What is the reason? If we see some others, it seems that we can kill them. Today, a man was locked up with me for a while. I was not angry with him. Fortunately, a little while ago, Pavur Ilya the Queen's men came and freed him. Is that so? She bit her balls with her crooked teeth. Her brows furrowed. There was a sigh of rage. Who is a man so hastily set free? Do you know? She asked. What do you not know? Someone is the son of an old doctor. So what dad, did he say inappropriate words? You said you were so angry that you might kill him. There is my uncle's daughter Pungazali in Kodakara. He said inappropriate words about her. That's why I got so angry with him. But he said good manners and I let him go. What's that good manners, father? He went to Kadakare with my friend Vandiyathevan. There, this Sand Alan betrayed my friend and tried to hand him over to the men of Palyavur. That didn't work. Couldn't? So did that one escape? Vanati and Kunta asked in unison with interest. They came into this underground prison to find out. Yes, lady. My friend has escaped. Punguzali took him in a boat at night and went to the island of Ceylon in the sea. The searchers were deceived. This Badagon was also deceived. Both the ladies looked at each other. Their faces revealed the joy that was buried in their hearts. Kuntave Sendan looked at Amudan and said, Father. Are you so happy that one person has escaped? It is right to keep you in prison. She said. Mother. If it's right to put me in prison for that crime, you two should be put in the cell next to me. He said. Both ladies laughed. In that dark underground prison, as strange as the song of Sendan Amuthan was, so was their laughter. Kundave said, You are very wicked, very wicked. If you are kept here, you will spoil the others here by singing songs. Tell the chief of the fort and let him free you and look at the matter again, said Kundave. Mother. Don't do that. There's a man in the next room. He says to me a hundred times a day, tell me a song. If you tell me, I'll tell you where in Ceylon I've hidden the crown and garland of the Pandya clan. Tell me to leave it here until then. Sentine Muthan said. Poor. Do you mean to stay here until you two go mad? Then what is the fate of your mother Vaniyamai? After saying that, the younger Brady left the place and the others also went. Half an hour later some servants came and freed Sendan Amuthan from the underground prison and took him to the gates of Tanjore Fort.